I genuinely actually wanted to find a, a business idea. So I was, I was on the hunt for a business idea. And um, I was at university, I was doing English, I was down to do a law course, um, which I wanted to convert my English degree into a law degree. And so I kind of needed something to sort of save me from that. And so I was desperately trying to find a you know, business to get my, my arms round. So glasses direct was actually third time lucky. Um, then I saw a pair of glasses and just thought, look, this is, there's got to be an opportunity here. They're really, really expensive and, you know, there's no obvious reason why they should be. So it looked to me like the margins were inflated um, and, I, and I worked out that I could save people money. I guess it's just a mentality of kind of keeping your, your mind sort of open to, to, to finding problems and then looking for the solutions. market research which typically costs businesses like a thousand pounds a shot to get hold of a Mintel report but in college libraries they're there for free so the first step I took is to get you know this a hundred pages of gold dust immerse myself in the industry kind of get my head around all the different sort of dynamics com competition you know I'm not trained in business but I think you've got to know what you're talking about before you sort of start ringing up suppliers and stuff that was sort of part of my research and then I also went to suppliers once I felt confident and I started making calls, getting in the car, driving to see suppliers, trying to set up accounts um, with suppliers in order to, to, to kind of test the model. I mean, I sent my prescription up to a laboratory. They sent me down a pair of prescription glasses for six quid or something. So in that point, I had a pair with, with 150 pounds and a pair worth six pounds. And so I kind of had that bit. And then I tried to sell them to, to friends. I sold them to to, a, a guy came in to deliver our first office desk, you know, my desk, and I sold the courier guy that delivered it a pair, and he loved it. So, you know, it, there was no company existing at that point. It was just kind of fiddling around with the idea and getting a sense, a feel for whether it would work. First of all, when you're trying to find a supply route, you know, just doggedly persist. This is what makes you an entrepreneur is, you know, someone who's not an entrepreneur will just walk over an idea and they'll come up against a bit of a barrier and then that'll be that, it'll be forgotten about and they'll be back to the, you know, accountancy or whatever. And um, if you're an entrepreneur then you keep going, you keep trying, you know, nothing gets in your way and just to keep going. Serious difficulties trying to persuade, you know, an industry that basically hasn't changed for 50 years to supply us with frames, with lenses to kind of put together into glasses. So I'd be in the car and I'd be knocking on these guys' doors going, look, you know, I know I'm a 21-year-old, but I've got this great idea and I think it can change the industry. And yes, 95% of the time they'd go, no, you know, get lost, go home, get real, we're not supplying you, and I just have to keep going at it. And I think if you're young and you've got a particularly renegade idea, then you've got to be prepared. I mean, it's human nature. I mean, these guys, you know, managing their own risk, and you know, um, uh, especially if you're if you're if you're doing something which might compromise their existing clients. And in these these case, these suppliers had high street chains, so they were worried about upsetting them. And so we had to keep keep going until we found someone. And I eventually did find someone. And it was a, it was a mixture of they needed the work and. Um, I presented it to them as, come on, give it a try, and eventually they, they said yes, and um, with it, you know, before long we were putting 100 jobs a day through their, through their operations. You know, there were times when, you know, interesting times when we'd be, you know, we'd have orders just coming in the whole time and we'd be up till sort of four in the morning trying to process them um, because of, you know, database issues like um, the, the database would fire out the order through the printer and then it would have to be rekeyed in to the system and then rekeyed in by the laboratory. And so, you know, there were definitely some efficiencies we could have made in the way we built our systems at, right at the beginning. Getting going, some of the biggest kind of, you know, worries are, you know, the commitments you're making at every step of the way. So when you sign the lease or when you recruit someone, you know, it's you're talking about their career, or you're talking about a six-month lease on a property, and each step you're making is, is, is taking a great leap, leap of faith. And um, again, you know, an entrepreneur needs to kind of embrace those rather than resist them, and as unnatural as it might sound, seem at the time, you've just got to do it. It's natural to be reluctant to give equity away. I mean, I'm reluctant to give equity away, but you know, at the end of the day, I think, I think your, your, your business has to grow and, you know, I, I, I would be very cautious about restricting it 
um, uh, uh, in terms of what it needs because you're sentimental or, or you're protective over the equity. We had Specsavers faxing in employees of uh, pictures of their employees wearing our glasses. We had, you know, in order to show they were testing us, we had um, complaints to our regulator, you know, uh, we, we, which were never upheld to try and get us to be shut down. We sent a load of sheep, you know, people dressed as sheep into Specsaver stores telling them not to fleece customers. And we got into a kind of legal battle with, with Specsavers about um, the use of these sheep on billboards around Newcastle and places like that. Um, um, very funny legal, you know, dialogues where they, you know, we were going, uh, our lawyers were going, now our client maintains he's not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And spec savers were debating whether they were, in fact, spec expensive, as, as we were calling them. Anyway, the whole thing generated a massive amount of kind of publicity and momentum for the business. And, and, and you know, we had the, the, the Financial Times and Daily Mail following it. We were publishing all their legal letters on our website, which um, enraged them even further. But our customers loved it and, you know, we created a kind of challenger brand because effectively, you know, we were challenging. We were challenging these guys. We were actually able to turn that, you know, huge amount of pressure around to our advantage. And my advice to entrepreneurs starting out, if you're doing something very disruptive, is that, you know, it's not just, you know, British Airways and Virgin that, you know, engage in dirty tricks. If you're doing something very disruptive, you should expect it from the established high street and you should deal with it. And in fact, you know, what I've done throughout this year is to, is to build a senior management which is poised to grow this company with me, you know, over the next few years. So I've, for example, recruited the CFO who, uh, from FigLeaves.com, who was CFO there for seven years, um, Howard Bryant. I've recruited the um, general manager of Costco Opticians, um, um, Philip Meyer, as our director of product. Um, and, uh, and I've recruited a, a, a VP from 1-800-CONTACTS in the States to run our US operation. You know, it really requires two people right at the top. I'm executive chairman. I have a fantastic CEO in Kevin Corneals who I've recruited um, from advertising.com, which is AOL's subsidiary. Um, he, he also ran match.com as well. And together, you know, we work better, um, to be honest, than me on my own. So it, it, was, a, it was a real, um, a real good move. First of all, you know, ask everyone I know to, you know, if they know people, um, if they would like to, you know, be be interested in this um, about a particular role. Um, and then I also engage, you know, the best headhunters that that I can, you know, um, who have a reputation amongst entrepreneurs, um, and I make them aware that they're also um, that I'm also going direct, um, and I might introduce some competition between headhunters as well, depending on the terms. Um, and then I run a fairly lengthy process. I mean, a lot of our roles have taken four to six months to recruit. Um, you know, I, I make sure that we're not in a hurry to do it because that's the last thing you need when you're, you know, recruiting the people you're going to work with for the next few years. Um, you know, it is to be, you know, in, in, in a hurry to do it and give yourself enough time. Um, and then, uh, and also go with your gut. Sure. So the aim is still to be the dominant, you know, global eyewear provider, um, and you know, this is a huge market. It's about 40 billion in the UK and the US. You know, we're still the market leaders online. We have to maintain that positioning. We have to grow our market share. You know, we want to take the online segment up to at least 10%, um, and we're busy executing that.